Howdy everyone, this is Dave, and in this video, we will be discussing the atrocious execution of Robert Francois Damien, a mentally unwell man who made an unsuccessful assassination attempt on King Louis XV. Damien was born in northern France on January 9, 1715, and was the eighth of ten children. His father was a poor farmer although some sources state that he also worked as a prison guard or a gatekeeper. His mother passed away when he was just 16. It is said that even at a young age, Robert was wild and unmanageable. His disruptive behavior earned him the nickname Robert the Devil. After his mother's passing, he left to be raised by his great uncle. He enlisted in the army and began serving a master that he followed to the Holy Roman Empire. In 1734, he found himself at the Siege of Philipsburg, in the midst of heavy and drawn-out conflict. A successful siege of a fortified location is no small feat, and this siege lasted for two months before the fortress surrendered. The experience of the entire thing traumatized Damien's already disturbed mind. When he returned, he became a servant at the College of the Jesuits, located in Paris. He also served several councillors of the Parliament of Paris, but his jobs were always short-lived, lasting just a few months at a time, with periods of unemployment scattered in between. He was fired from many of his jobs due to misconduct, such as stealing from his employers. Many thought him to be insane, but what weighed heavy on his mind was actually religion. He was really into it, even making drunken public speeches about it. His general grievance with religion involved the French Catholic clergy refusing to grant the Holy Sacrament to members of the controversial religious movement called Jansenism. This meant that they could not participate in devotionals, like taking communion. Damien supported Jansenists and was most agitated by the exclusion. This thought likely burrowed to the forefront of his mind and nestled in, becoming too intrusive to be able to sit quiet about it. Ultimately, he found a target for all of his blame. It was none other than the king, Louis the Fifteenth. With his mark acquired, Robert Francois Damien began to plot. On January 5th, 1757, just days before his 42nd birthday, Damien entered the Chateau of Versailles in a crowd of thousands of people who were hoping to get a mere glimpse of the king. The majority of the royal family was away, but the king had stayed in Versailles due to his daughter being ill. After some time, the king decided to join the rest of his family. King Louis XV exited the palace of Versailles and approached his carriage. Suddenly, Robert drew a penknife and sprinted past the guards. He ran straight toward the king and lunged his knife into him. He was stabbed either in the chest or between the fourth and fifth rib. It probably took everyone a moment to process what was happening. Damien did not take advantage of the chaos and stayed put allowing himself to be captured immediately. It was a cold day, and the king was wearing thick clothing to shield himself from the frigid weather. This thick attire protected him from the penknife causing fatal damage, as the blade only penetrated less than half an inch of King Louis XV's flesh. However, the wound bled profusely, and it worried the king enough to summon a confessor so that he could account for his sins. With the queen at his side, Louis XV confessed and asked for forgiveness regarding numerous extramarital affairs. And let me tell you, there were a lot. Like if you were going to confess all that, then you'd want to immediately die afterwards. Apparently, Louis XV pardoned Damien right away and wanted a more appropriate punishment for the crime, but he was powerless to save Damien from his fate. This was a decision that was not up to the king to make. He was transferred to the same prison that the last person to assassinate a king was sent to. 
In 1609, Francois Ravaillac, who was also a delusional individual, assassinated King Henry IV by stabbing him while his carriage was stopped. The punishments they received were very similar, and Ravaillac has an interesting tale of his own. But I feel like Damien had the worst of the two, mainly because he had failed and was about to undergo an ordeal without even having the satisfaction of completing his mission, as well as how unfortunate the execution was carried out. Because of Damien's mental state, he was bound in restraints and placed under heavy guard. Damien was charged with regicide and sentenced to be tortured before being brutally executed. The method of execution chosen was to be quartered by horses. A punishment reserved for those who kill a king. Quartering alone is an absolutely atrocious execution method, but this particular subcategory involved the dismemberment to be done by literal horsepower. Because of the religious strife that was going on in the country, Damien was first interrogated to see if he was working alone or with other accomplices. The torture to divulge names was unsuccessful, and Robert insisted that he acted alone. In a document simply called Letter from a Gentleman in Paris to his friend in London, dated 1757, it gives an account of what was going on. This pamphlet was how English readers would stay up to date on what was happening. What follows are just portions of the letter. Damien appears to be very resolute. His feet have been scorched and the calf of his leg pinched with red hot tongs. He shrieked indeed, but confessed nothing. He was afterwards carried to prison and chained in a dungeon and guards set over him. When he was urged to discover more, he answered. He would speak when it was time, that he was very sensible he deserved death and begged it might be hastened. The wife and daughter of Damien were sent to the Bastille in hopes that some discoveries would be made. Nothing, however, of consequence has come to light from them, though they freely told all they knew of the abominable life and conversation of this monster. On the morning of the 28th of March, 1757, Damien was removed from his cell. As they pulled him out, beginning his painful journey, he was allegedly heard to say, this day will be hard. Before the execution would commence, he was subjected to further punishment. He was delivered on a cart, completely naked, while holding a two-pound wax torch that was lit. Robert's legs were placed in a contraption referred to as the boot. Vaguely resembling the shape of a boot, this medieval torture device was designed to mutilate. Once the victim's legs were fastened inside, a crank would then be turned, which resulted in squeezing the foot that was locked inside. The pressure would be increased to the point of the metatarsal heads rubbing together. The pressure would be increased even further beyond the point of comprehension, shattering the bones and causing significant torment. Wood was also commonly wedged inside to add even more pressure. He was put on a scaffold and was mercilessly tortured with red-hot pincers, squeezing and simultaneously branding different parts of him. The areas specified in the sentencing were his breasts, arms, thighs, and legs. The order of execution stated that the hand that Damien used to hold the pen knife that assaulted the king should be focused upon. The hand was held in place and covered in sulfur. When a fire source ignites the chemical element known as sulfur, the reaction is an eruption of intense burning. The sulfur also bubbles while it's hot. When looking at this occur, the last place you'd want this to happen is on your body. If you think that's bad, they then poured molten wax, molten lead, boiling oil, and burning pitch over his tortured body parts, all of which sounding terrible on their own. But they were all being used. The multiple forms of burning on already burnt skin. At some point, there would have to be nerve damage or something. After these tortures, Robert Francois Damien 
was finally ready to completely pay for his crime. The royal executioner harnessed Damien to the horses. He pulled out a blade and emasculated him before proceeding. It had been 148 years since the last regicide, so this technique was not a skill that executioners seemed to pass down. The executioner lacked experience with this type of method, and the whole thing was botched. The horses were driven in different directions, but instead of dismembering, Damien simply did not separate being held together by ligaments and tendons. The inhumane retribution forced Damien's death to be a drawn out and painful process. No doubt multiple attempts of pulling him apart were made before he was manually quartered in order to disconnect the limbs from his torso. In my video about Balthazar Girard, I mentioned that he did not cry out or make a sound the entire time he was being tortured and executed, displaying unbelievable restraint while being put under the worst pain. He must have had incredible willpower. But in this case, it was a mind of a troubled individual, and stoicism was not how Damien approached his demise. It is said that he screamed a lot, and while even in the throes of being killed, he voiced how he was feeling throughout. Near the end, he cried out, O oh death, why art thou so long in coming? Among many other pleas for God to save him. It's pretty awful to read, and I can't imagine witnessing this transpire in person. Upon hacking Robert up, some sources say that he died after his last arm was removed, but others say that he was still alive as a torso while he was thrown on a pyre and set ablaze. His ashes were to be scattered. It's really hard for me to believe that he would survive as long as he did, especially after being castrated. That tends to be an easy way to bleed out quickly. What's worse for Damien is that this entire time, all he wanted was a quick death, but fate had different plans, and he suffered exponentially. An 18th century adventurer that was there that day to witness the execution was so impacted by the experience that he included it in his memoirs. The following is an excerpt. We had the courage to watch the dreadful sight for four hours. Damien was a fanatic who, with the idea of doing a good work and obtaining a heavenly reward, had tried to assassinate Louis XV. And though the attempt was a failure, and he only gave the king a slight wound, he was torn to pieces as if his crime had been consummated. I was several times obliged to turn away my face and to stop my ears as I heard his piercing shrieks, half of his body having been torn from him. But they did not budge an inch. Was it because their hearts were hardened? They told me, and I pretended to believe them that their horror at the wretch's wickedness prevented them from feeling that compassion which his unheard of torments should have excited. After the execution, Damien's house was torn down and no other house was allowed to be built on top of the plot. His wife and daughter had to flee, but it's said that Louis XV offered them a pension to help them deal with their miserable situation. Other family members had to change their names to avoid the shame and ridicule. However, the Damiens began using their names again during the French Revolution, which saw its very own onslaught of brutal deaths and executions. And that's about all there is to tell about Robert Francois Damien, an unstable man who was consumed by religion and after messing around with a specific scale. See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out. He was subjected to a brutal ending, which has gone down in history. If you found a way to enjoy this content, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, have a good one.